This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com in review. And what I'm looking at today is 2023's Knock at the Cabin by M. Night Shyamalan. And as I said in reference to this particular director before, while I think his work has improved, I'm not a huge fan of it in general. He has some great movies, particularly The Sixth Sense. And he's had a lot of fairly middling ones. Though, as I said, his work has begun to improve, starting with The Visit. Though, he's not a director I seek out. And when I saw the commercials for Knock at the Cabin, and upon hearing the premise of the movie, I was a bit put off, because I think it's a fairly ludicrous premise. If you're not familiar, Knock at the Cabin revolves around this couple, a gay couple, and I'll get back to that in a moment, who, with their daughter, are on a trip to a cabin. Eventually, these four people arrive, who tell them that they have to sacrifice one of their number, or the world will be destroyed, essentially. And this is a stupid premise, by my reckoning, because people kill themselves and others for fairly trivial reasons, particularly in the United States. So the idea that knowing that killing one of these, one of these people killing the other would save the world, one life measured against billions, is not even a question for me. But see, that's where the movie is interesting. The movie revolves around as I mentioned earlier, this gay couple. And what they have to decide is whether or not what these people are saying is true. That's the basis of the movie, and that is interesting. It's a very fascinating debate. Though, the premise, as I said, is ludicrous. And the couple being gay is not relevant. And in fact, I'm wondering why it was a gay couple at all. It literally doesn't matter in terms of the story. And in fact, there are attempts to make it relevant. And they just kind of fall flat. And that's not to say that you shouldn't have gay couples in movies. I have nothing against it. In fact, the couple in this movie were way too, what I like to call platonically gay. Not that I expect writing on screen. But nonetheless, this couple didn't kiss each other or anything that I can recall. It was a very platonic feeling relationship. It was very much about words and not about feelings. And I find that depiction of gay people frankly tiring. And I don't really like it that much. And that's all this movie gave us. So, Based on that portrayal, there was no real reason for this couple to be gay at all. It just didn't matter. And these four individuals that visited, Dave Bautista being one of them, killed themselves after every attempt to sway this couple to kill one or the other, or their daughter, and I assume that's not going to happen. I'm not sure why they're doing that. Maybe they don't want to experience what they think is to come. It's very confusing, and it's not very well drawn out. That being said, Knock at the Cabin is a terrible title, but a really good movie. Well, I should say, it's a really effective movie. It does what it does quite well. And as I mentioned already, there are story issues big enough to fit a Mack truck through. But it's very well told, despite the problems with the story. And to reinforce what I said earlier, that debate is where the interest of the movie is. It's not necessarily that if either of these two men do a particular thing, or don't do a particular thing, humanity will die. It's more of coming to accept that what these four strangers 
are telling them is true. And let's be clear, anyone telling you that, you would think is out of their fucking mind. And that's why I thought the concept, the premise of the film was so ridiculous. But it's not about that. Unfortunately, it's also not about the love between two people either. But it's about deciding whether or not something that, as outlandish as it sounds, is actually true. And as I said, that's an interesting discussion because while I think the relationship that is depicted between these two men is not particularly well drawn out, except in a very obvious manner, the debate is the heart of the movie, and that really works. It's a gorgeously shot, it's an interesting movie with a crappy premise and a somewhat weak story, but it still works despite those issues. And one other thing, what is it with M. Night Shyamalan inserting himself in his own movies? I honestly don't understand why he needs to do this, because as far as I can tell, he does it every single time. Well, I shouldn't say that, if only because I haven't seen any of his movies recently other than Knock in the Cabin. But if I recall, he always manages to put himself in his own movies. Like I think there was a scene during Old, I saw in a trailer, there was someone driving a shuttle to that beach. It was a night shallow. Here he turns up once again in a manner that's not at all relevant to the story, but it's just the idea that he needs, apparently, needs to do this. And I just don't get it. He is not a particularly charismatic actor. It's not a bad being that he is a director first, but he's not a particularly charismatic or even interesting actor. I mean, Sidney Pollack, great director, very good actor. M. I. Shaman, good director, so-so actor. And I wish he would stop doing that, namely popping up in his own movies. Because for me, that's just more the ego thing that virtually killed his career early on. Now, that's not to say that he can't act as well. My thing is, why does he only do it in his own movies? I'm 100% positive that if M. Night Shyamalan wanted to, he could play a cameo in virtually anyone's movie he wanted. As in like a walk-on and or someone that says a few lines. I'm sure that could happen if he wanted to, but he always feels the need to insert himself, literally, in his own movies. And I just get tired of it. I, I find it vaguely off-putting, and I don't enjoy seeing him turn up. But that being said, Knockin' the Cabin is a pretty good watch. It's enjoyable. It's ludicrous. Its story doesn't quite make sense, and as I said, there are plenty of holes in it, but it's well shot, it's well acted. When the premise is given a little air to breathe, and it gets down to its essential core, it's interesting. It's not a great movie by any stretch, but it is one worth seeing. So what do you think? This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. If you agree, disagree, let me know down below. And as usual, consider a like or a follow.